Stilo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. This show was so interesting, I'm back the next day for it. Inside Prison, Britain's Behind Bars, Season 1, Episode 2. Here from my girl Ellie. <clears throat> and the blonde. Quench my thirst over them. Um, let's get into it. <clears throat> Oh yeah, sorry about the headphones once again. You can only hear in your left ear. I'm going home tomorrow morning, 5 a.m. Don't worry about it. Another raise on the Britain's prison estate stretches from Inverness to Dartmoor. Over six months, we followed the extremes of life inside. From women's prisons... Ew. I'm in trouble! Young offender institutes... ...to high security jails. Come, give me your arm! Give me your arm! Friday, 1.30 p.m. Right, let's get canteen sorted. And DHL are delivering this week shopping for the prisoners. Keeping order is... So wait, that gets delivered once a week? The daily struggle for... Brand new stuff once a week, okay. ...for the prison's officers. And canteen day can be particularly challenging. Okay, come on guys, just crack on. Basically, every week uh, on a Monday, you order your stuff. And then Friday it will come. The canning is very important. If there was no canning, trust me, there'd be riots. Every week up to... Obviously, there's no storage for it in the jail because it's overcrowded, so they have to order from the outside. Special order, like, everybody, so there's no overfill. Okay, I One million pounds of canteen, goods and treats, are ordered in by prisoners across the country. They go to work, they earn a little bit of money, and then they put their canteen sheet in and they, they buy their chocolate, you know, chocolate. They don't get chocolate as a rule in prison unless they buy it. Canteen for prisoners is probably the thing they look forward to the most. Using wages from prison jobs or money sent in from friends and family, canteen can be anything from noodles to vapes, chocolate to shower gel. Good morning, everybody. Line up for today. Calvin, you'll be on spur three. Uh, Michelle will be on spur two. You know, if you can jump on one for the bits that are needed. Michelle is the name. Okay. Got it. Michelle and Ellie. Just be really, really vigilant on there. Watch each other's backs. Let's go. Bullingdon is one of the UK's largest prisons, housing over a thousand inmates, ranging from shoplifters to murderers. For the prison's 197 officers, Canteen Day presents the toughest shift of the week. On I would imagine people can get pretty angry if the orders are wrong and all types of D-Wing, senior officer Martin Brock is in charge. It's probably one of the busiest days for the wing. It has come to known to be Black Eye Friday. What that means really is that a lot of debt is uh, paid off today. With cash banned inside, Canteen has an even more important role in British prisons. All canning, there's all currency. Do you know what I mean? More important role in British prisons. I'm just trying to figure out who was braiding this males here. Tough. All canning, there's all currency. Do you know what I mean? Tuna, noodles, talcum powder, shower gels, whatever. You buy one, you might get two back. You buy two, you get four. Four is eight. That's it. Don't do that. You get black on. <laughs> Black on Friday. During the week, goods are lent and borrowed. Friday is payback day, a time for paying debts and settling scores. Certain people owe people money and stuff, and if they don't come, then people get attacked and all sorts of things can happen. It's like a little business shop. Like, you're coming to me for two packs of noodles today, and I want four back Friday. 
to double bubble out of the world. That's how you get through jail. You can't go through jail without doing that kind of stuff, you know what I'm trying to say? They're going to locate somebody in there from B-Wing who has been beaten up over a packet of prison issue biscuits. Yes. Pretty much anything in a prison is... He looking like, oh my God, he got beat up over some biscuits. Yes, this is prison. That is money. The commodity. We all know debt happens in prison. It is inevitable, but we're never going to stop it. it. That's something we have to come to accept. What my goal is, is to make sure that Today, nobody gets hurt. With up to 200 prisoners on D-Wing, Officer Brock knows that with today's delivery of Canteen, his team of five will be at full stretch. Come on, gents, behind your door for Canteen, please. Team of five and three of them is women. I mean, no offense, they can, women can do just as great of a job as men can do in any field. But this particular field, it's gotta be tough. And with 14 years' experience, veteran prison officer Kim Newman knows what to expect. Come on, James, let's have you away, please. I enjoy the job, but I don't enjoy back going further. We don't know what's going to happen this afternoon when the canteen's issued. Yeah, so it's after three o'clock, basically. You'll hear all the shouting. With the canteen delivery on its way, Kim has to stay a step ahead. I'm just smiling because I'm anticipating a lot of negativity. And I'm here for it, even though I don't condone it, you two. Head of the inmates. We've got a couple of minutes, lads, and then I want you behind your doors for canteen, yeah? You know your prisoners. You can, you can see what they're doing. They're getting ready to let each other know who owes who. So you have to be very vigilant, mate. All inmates must be in their cells and locked up before canteen's delivered. Mr Rigby, one's just gone in the shower after I told him not to. Can you just get him out, please? You get a lot of prisoners that will uh, come up to you, try and keep you busy, distract you from to keep monitoring what's going on, and it's just controlling them so he doesn't get out of hand. So if you fell through that and hurt yourself, Hold up for me. I'm trying to see if you... Yeah, they're not safe, boo. Have you been doing drugs? It smells of weed in there. See you in a bit, lads. 2.15 p.m. Delivery deadline is approaching. Fast. The unlock is at 3 o'clock, and they've given us 45 minutes to do two under-prisoners' canteen. Staff must check and supervise delivery of every bag to each cell door. This is where it starts going negative. They gave them only 45 minutes to go through all of this stuff. That means it's going to be late. That means irritation is going to occur. Hi, lads. Canteen. Good, miss. Thank you very much, lads. It's a long signature, sir. <laughs> You've got one bag, yeah? Yeah. Lewis has got five, yeah? Twelve bags, Mr. Nelson. Mr. Nelson's a hustler. This goes express from this cell, are we? You're full of rubbish. One at the bottom, yeah? The bags at the doors. Some will have nine, ten bags, because they're not just earning the cells, they're having money sent in from the families. And then you've got the other uh, spectrum where they've got no family outside, they've got no job, and that's why they borrow. With any delivery service, items sometimes go astray. They have to put the lights on afterwards if there's anything wrong with the canteen, like they're missing orders. I'll be there in a minute, sweet. Missing canteen, but he's been charged for it. Around 2,000 bags have been delivered today, and officers are responsible for noting any mistakes. It's on the list, but no. I've got, I've got three bags for the Lewis. It's um, wrong one, isn't it? And it was that amount. Behind bars, a missing delivery can mean that prisoners can't settle their debts. When stuff goes missing out of that canteen, it's upsetting for them. They'll say, oh, I'll pay you back on canteen day, and then their canteen is wrong, or they haven't got enough money, or, you know. It's just like the streets, man. You got debts on the streets. 
Well, I'll pay you back on payday, but all something comes up, I'll pay you Get the South in serious trouble. Hello, it's Senior Officer Bob Plantini. Um, I'm just phoning, really, because there was a bit of an issue uh, with canteen. People just didn't get it. Do you know where um, Mr Charles's canteen is? Yeah. Can you let And I'll find out what this one is at the same time. So. We'll go to DHL and sort everyone's canteen out. It's just setting the plot for, for, for negativity. I but you have to bang up. And I've got two people refusing on Spur 3 to bang up, and I've got about half a dozen prisoners without canteen. I, I genuinely, genuinely, I'm losing my faith. With more and more prisoners claiming missing canteen, it seems that deaths are being settled one way or another. Are they both in there? In, they're both beyond the doors, and I'll work out once we lock everybody up. Mm -hmm. In, they're both beyond the doors, and I'll work out once we lock everybody up. So y'all gotta lock everybody up, then go break up the fight. Somebody gonna go beat, 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 beat up bad, and then... Today's canteen day, it's Friday, it's, um, literally it's just been given out. My pad mate got debted up. So it was only like 22 pounds, so like, yeah, he was smoking, um, spice, and, um, yeah, he obviously couldn't afford it. I, I, I paid for my stuff. Absolutely. You know, we want you to have your stuff, don't we? I just want to oh, can't right. Leave. Right. On the floor, yeah? yeah? Worst case scenario, they get assaulted. What more worryingly, they're told to assault staff to pay their debt off. Should we stand you up? Up, 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 up. Missing canteen's a big thing. On a day like today where it's wrong and it leaves us. Wait, he said they're told to assault staff to make okay. to try and quell whatever's coming next. You guys stay here then. Kim and her team have been called in to deal with a violent inmate in his cell. Mate. Kim immediately removes the man's cellmate before getting to grips with the offender. Come on, mister. All right, then, officers. You'll see. All right. All right. <laughs> His roommate is terrified. So, listen, listen to me. Right, we're gonna let go of the legs and you're all gonna check out. There goes the ping pong table. The prisoner is subdued, but Kim has taken a blow to the head. See, I don't want to be labeled that guy, but I told y'all in the beginning, this is a tough job for a woman. Now she getting taken out on a gurney, she gonna be out of work for two weeks. Despite following control and restraint protocol, Kim has been knocked to the ground and is taken by ambulance to hospital. This is Dobby. There are 13 female-only prisons across Britain. And that one's Princess. Set in leafy Surrey, HMP Downview is one of the largest. And Friday afternoon here has an altogether more relaxed atmosphere. This one, okay. dangerous lady, I know it's quite figgy, but a lot of it, it's, it's based on a woman that obviously, she stood her ground, like, and when you look at her, you think she's an elegant woman, and she's always dressed nice, very polite, but get on the wrong side. I just feel like when she speaks, she's trying to hold in a lot of slobber. Like there's a possibility that slobber could come out at any time. And then it's another story. I'll connect there. Dangerous lady and repeat offender Colette O'Flaherty is serving a 20-month sentence 
for smashing a wine bottle over a love rival's head. I'm nearly 30 now, and I've never along the way thought to go and get a book. But since I've been here, this is my little getaway. This is 29-year-old Colette's second getaway to prison in the last few years. I've never actually done my school in, in secondary school, and I've never, not anyone around me either, is it like, I've never had someone interested in books or could like, advise me to go and get a book. Just weeks away from release, she's trying to keep her head down. I love to talk. I love to chat. I love to talk. And in, in the library, when I come here, straight away they go, oh, Flaherty, I go, yeah, I've got it, I've got it. So I have to bring my voice down and be quiet. Can I get this one out, please? Thank you. Is there any new books of Martina Cole coming out soon that we know? She does about one a year. Oh, does she? So oh, OK. Yeah, she does. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Thank That's you very great. much. Thank you, miss. See you soon. See you later. <laughs> I love going to the library, and I've got many girls into the library as well. Some of the girls don't like reading, and I say, listen, if you want to take, make things um, occupy yourself and take your mind out of being in prison, the best thing is a book. Many of the prisoners here are mums. To help them and their children, the prison organises seven family days a year. They do two a year. They do Christmas and Easter. And previously, um, for the Christmas one, I, I really thought I was going to get it, and I never. This is at Christmas. This is what I got from my little boy. I love it. And my little girl made me that. And I, I find all this precious because they're young and they're, they're so innocent little things they're making. It just shows the innocence and how young they are. Oh, no, I've not seen the kids for a good eight months. Can't go through that devastation again of... Honestly, man, I have a child. That seems like torture. Eight months? Two days in my mind, and I'm like, all right, it's time. Bring her back. Not getting a family day with them, so fingers crossed that this all comes through this time. Because, you know, I miss them. They're my babies. Family day is a longer visit. It's just more time for them to spend with their family role. I'm a fan of Miss Ellie, Ellie, Ellie. I've done a really quick two hour visit. It's a bit more open, they have activities and stuff for them to do with their children. They sometimes have photo shoots. It is important because it's more natural for the kids to see their parents in that kind of situation rather than over a table. And when they get rejected, it is really upsetting for them. But with 300 inmates and only 50 family places, most prisoners will miss out. At a visit, so you're not allowed to get up in it. But on family day, you're allowed to get up and do activities, and there's a bouncy castle and rah, 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 so you can spend time with, like, I can spend time with my son in it. I've had two visits with my little boy in six months. So, do you know what I mean? It's heartbreaking, really. Heartbroken from the decisions you made. Yeah. It's bad news for Colette. I need to talk to my family. So if you can't give it to me, then I'm just going to jump on the phone anyway. She has not been given a family day place. Give up. Give up. Her release is only weeks away. Yeah, ain't you trying to get out? Like, just chill out. <laughs> nah, I can't just say that. I understand the frustration, but like, you have to get out, man. Chill. People in there for life, 20 years. You're getting out in a week and a half. And places have been given to prisoners serving longer sentences. Yeah. My kids are missing out on mummy. And then, I'm from sucking way that I'm not there. You've, been, you've tried to call them numerous times today. I've seen you do this. And I appreciate that it must be frustrating, but you can't be them getting yourself I'm finding it harder and harder to pick the phone up, harder and harder to look at the pictures. As a mummy, that breaks my heart, you know, because you're never going to get them days back again. There's a prison-wide alert. Colette has taken matters into her own hands. So 
Well, she went and she about to get more time. And taken a fellow prisoner hostage. So she's definitely about to get some more months added to her sentence. I don't even be thinking, like, I understand the frustration, but, like, you're just, like, man, you're not helping your situation. <laughs> At all. Distraught at missing out on a place at Family Day, prisoner Colette O'Flaherty has taken a fellow inmate hostage and sparked a prison-wide alert. I kept my friend hostage at Knife Point, and I said to her when I went in there, look, I kept my friend hostage. I kept my friend. What a great friend to let you do that. At uh, Knife Point, and I said to her when I went in there, look, I love you, I'm sorry about this, I'm very sorry, but go with it. And she was like, what do you mean? And then I pulled out the blade. The segregation unit is reserved for the most violent and disruptive prisoners. Do you understand why you're here? I do, miss, yeah. Okay. I do, yeah. But yesterday was quite a blur for me. It's, it's gone over a couple of weeks, really. I've been deteriorating bit by bit, like little things have been happening. Is she a priest? In. Yesterday I had enough, I just couldn't cope no more with everything. I'm in four walls and I can't mm. control nothing. I'm, not, I'm in, in a pickle that I don't want to be in. Yeah. Taking a fellow prisoner hostage can mean a severe punishment. The emotions just hit the roof, don't they? They do, miss. They did yesterday for me, yeah, really bad. I hurt myself yesterday because it was the only thing that I could do without getting nicked or getting in trouble for. And I was in a lot of pain yesterday. Two-thirds of prisoners will self-harm while inside. And female prisoners are four times more likely to do it than men. But we're here for you. You yeah. always ask to speak to one of us. Just six weeks away from release, Colette may now face an additional lengthy spell inside. A month and a half. A month and a half away, you might get 12 more months added. Britain sends more people to jail than any other country in Western Europe. What the fuck? Did you expect Earl Stick to be like the Ritz? Obviously, crack out in better condition than this. There are over 140,000 admissions every year. We have got space. Where is he racist? On average, 1,600 prisoners are transferred between establishments each week. Is he hygienic? You gotta do it like we do, man. You gotta let the non-violent offenders go. The, the, the light crime, the robberies, the, the blows, like, let them go. Oh, for Christ's sake. And staff are under pressure like never before. And staff are... Portland Prison on the coast of Dorset was built in 1848. It holds around 500 prisoners, and today... This huge complex only holds 500 prisoners? This is huge. There's a new arrival. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, see that, all right? yeah. Twenty-four-year-old prisoner Justin Millington has been transferred from HMP Park in Wales, and he comes with a reputation. I'm quite like outspoken. I'm, I don't really hold my tongue. Like, I just say it how it is, and it. And obviously, some people just don't like that. You end up fighting 15 or 20 of them all trying to jump all over your head. <laughs> and I'm just one of them people. I always attract bad company or problems. Millington's new home is Drake Wing, one of the toughest of Portland's seven wings. It houses 80 inmates, ranging. One of the toughest in there, and they gave they put some hip hop music on. What happened to the other kind of music? Why why hip hop gotta be associated with tough? Golly. From petty thieves to lifers. You've got prisoners that have got mental health problems, prisoners that are violent. You've got to be on your guard all the time. Just don't know. Hey Mel, hey, how you doing? You ain't up there with Michelle and and, and, and Ellie, but you and when the next fight's gonna break out. Bigger and better, isn't it, than the last 
Because it's more open plan as well, bigger wing. So obviously, it's a bit better for me, to be fair. So I've been doing jail now since I was like, what, 12 years old? You know, as a shoplifter, started robbing, you know, just stupidness with mates. Then I just like, started burgling, robbing cars, started doing like street robberies. You want, mate? Yeah. Millington isn't the only new boy on Drake Wing. Oi! What? Fucking door open, though. Good move this morning. Former stonemason Mike Crocker is a rookie officer, fresh from a 10 week training course. Hey, mate, you're right. <laughs> Here we go again. This is the grocery store worker all over again, talking about a stonemason. Go back. Having a week? Yeah. Today, just four weeks into the job, he's part of a three-strong team responsible for keeping the inmates on the wing in nine. I've got about, if I can, if I can, I've got about ten people asking for a favour. It's literally non-stop, question, 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 can I have this, can I have this, can I have this? Do this, do this, do this. Can you get me a bucket? A bucket of what? Like a green bucket, like the bucket. I'll try. If, if I can't, then no, but I'll try it. What they forget is there's 80 other prisoners on the uh, on the wing asking for the same thing. I, mean, I don't know. I'm new. I'm new. There ain't many jobs, if any, that can really prepare you for this sort of experience. But like, what made you want to do that? Like, I'm a stone mason. Let me mason some stones. Let me stone some masons. Oh, time for a career change. Let's go be a prison guard. Like, what, what? Training doesn't pay for this. Yeah, it doesn't, this is where it really starts. You can't predict what's going to happen. Officer Crocker's not the only one trying to make a name for himself. On a wing where fights are frequent and status is everything. Men are like bitches, they talk more than women. Like, I'm sorry, but that's what they are. They're like, they bitch about each other. That's, no, that's real talk. That's, that's real everyday life. That's, that's an occurrence. In the free world as well. One day, uh, this, this man's my friend, but and then two days later, I find that he's been bitching about me. The lowest status in prison is claimed by Britain's 14,000 sex offenders. Millington's heard that someone on the wing is spreading false rumours that he's a sex offender. He's decided that someone is newbie officer Mike Crocker. Oh, look at that boy, your face off him. Look at that, look at that, slap your face off him. You're not a dickhead, man, I sit down. You're pissing me out, I just want to bite your nose off. What the hell are you doing? Did you or did you not? Excuse me, I'm going to ask you a question now. I'm going to ask you a question. You're putting me on nuts to me. Are you when you're on the wing, putting me on nuts? Wait, wait, wait. What are, the balance of power here is just. I'm going to. Man, listen. Pussy. I have no idea what you're doing. Get out of my face. You're a little dickhead. He's a little on. dickhead. No, come don't come around like that. I'll slap him. What are you on about? Slap him. We just got this on all sides. You tried to touch him. I'll slap him. No idea what you're doing. Like, no, 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 no. He put a whole lot of fear in that man's heart. <laughs> Oh, One of the prisoners thinks I've been called him a nonce or something. I've got no idea where that's come from. No idea at all. But wherever that's, I, I don't. He walking around the thing. Do you see him in the background? Look, like a shark in the water. Fresh bait. No idea at all. But wherever that's, I, I don't know what he's even on about. To, be, to tell the absolute truth, no idea. He's new, he has to make a name for himself. You've just been chosen. Don't take it offensively. I thought that was the new guy, it's not the new guy. Man. Millington, Justin. There he is, sticking up. Every hour across the country, a prison officer is attacked. They knew something was gonna That's happen. That's why Pearson walked off just to clear it. Sudden flare-ups are common, but more sinister attacks on officers are planned and coordinated amongst inmates. The bed, the whole of the freeze landing, it's just great. 
but I've noticed that all the cameras had been covered. Um, they would have covered the cameras because obviously they were going to do something and they wouldn't, want it, wouldn't have wanted that to have been filmed. If it weren't for Officer Sword noticing them cameras, I would have walked straight into a booby trap up there. Because he had it planned out, obviously. Like, that could have been... Um, it's possibly potting. If you get potted, mate, welcome to the potting club. Yeah, I'm in it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So what, what, ha what does he do? What is he, like, what is the protocol for this? Like, does he have to go work on another wing now? Because, like, he's clearly... has threats upon his life. Like, you can't continue to work right there. <laughs> I've been potted, I was potted in my first three months, being a prison officer. So I had feces and urine chucked in my face. Yeah. It was That's not funny, but wow. It's awful. And it does affect you mentally. It what? massively affects you. What happened? It's just part of the job, really, being abused and threatened. Officer Crocker's safety is now seriously at risk. Yeah, for sure. I had an idea, yeah, of we, maybe two officers who maybe, if anything, who didn't like me, yeah, would maybe say this shit. He's always at the door shouting threats out to people, I'm going to do your family and all that. Yeah, it's a few times he's done that now. But I can't have him on the wing if he's going to start threatening me and my family like that. When I then said to this person, is it this officer? The person's expression on their face basically said, listen, you've hit the nail on the head, and basically give me the nod and told me, listen, you, you, you bang on, yeah? First of all, I don't believe that for a second, honestly. You gotta use your brain in there, man. Dude that told you, that gave you that expression, is probably telling that rumor. He just probably redirected the attention. If I'm honest, a bit of a reality check. I, well, I knew these are the situations you, you could potentially be fronted up with. You can see in his body language that you're the keys as a liar, plain face liar. You can just see it and you can see the guilt of all written all over his face. Everyone said it. Everyone. To the point where I'm having to come shower with a big miss, yeah, like this, yeah, to just make sure no one's coming for me. Well, that's, that's smart. Show the cameras. Like, the cameras, that they're not on your side. Last call, two, get up! It's roll call on D-Wing, 12 p.m. We get this right every day except Friday, so our numbers need to be in now. Guys, who did Spur 2, Level 2? So what, what have you got? So you got one DHL, one, one DHL, DHL one. So have we got 55 on Spur 1 total? Yeah. Lovely. Let's go and tick off who our prayers are coming out, and then we, at least we, we're ready for that. What were you saying this morning? Who were you saying was going to murder me today? Yeah, we do have challenging prisoners on doing. You don't come in with rose tinted glasses on. Who came at Michelle like that? Why would y'all talk to Michelle like that? What ha what could Michelle have possibly done? You know that. You know we're dealing with very volatile individuals, and at any point you could get injured. It's over a week since Officer Kim Newman was injured during a violent restraint. Oh, shit. One, two weeks. It's not what we come to work for. Unfortunately, sometimes it does happen in the job. Friday is the Islamic day of worship. Officer Michelle Knight must escort D-Wing's Muslim prisoners to prayer. So, who have you got? You're under the influence. You can't go to prayers like that. Or you're not... You're off your head. I don't, I don't think you should go to prayers. He's been under the influence since about eight this morning. You're not going? No, you're not. If they're under the influence, you don't allow them to go to prayers or to work or anything. So now I have to go back and I have to place them on report. Any prisoner found under the influence of alcohol or drugs goes straight on report and faces extra time added to their sentence. He seems a bit cheeky and chatty. Turns out he was drunk. This is Hooch. Brewed in HMB Bullingdon, fully antibacterial hand gel, some fruit, some yeast. You can see the bread floating about on it. The bread at the bottom. You've got hooch. I'm not gonna lie, that is disgusting. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do in there to get like a little slight escape, but I mean, that's. Who 
Coach production is on the rise at Bullingdon, with officers seizing around five to ten litres a week. With things like hooch, the same as drugs, that can lead to, to violence, and violence can potentially lead to staff being assaulted. So I'm not going to let this one go. Unhappy Hour is about to break out on D-Wing. Can you let her know that he is under the influence of pooch? William Gofford, who's serving two years for GBH, is refusing to bang up and resisting restraint. It falls to his key worker, Michelle, to help get him under control. Michelle, no. Why does it fall on Michelle? Where is she? This is a, a, a grown man, 200 plus pounds, six foot two, three in there for GBH, grievous bodily harm. How does that hurt? Oh. Just manage the situation. Just look from afar and point. Oh, you Michelle shouldn't have been right there in the first place. Let's let's be real, y'all. Let's be real. There's no way that she should be the main person holding this person. Like, come on, dude. You sitting there watching Michelle. Where does it hurt? Where does it hurt? It hurts her morals that you didn't help her. He's going in cuffs and he's going down the Simple as that. Turn him over, gentlemen. Turn him over. Michelle is the second female officer D-Wing has lost in just over a week. Michelle, if you're watching this, just contact me. Let's talk about this. There's no respect for female staff where there used to be. It's like a new era of prisoner. They're challenging, they're difficult. They're there. They're rude. They're abusive. And let's be real. He didn't even... Hold on. This is 3107? Oh. Bang up and resisting restraint. He didn't even do anything. Like, he just fell to the ground. It falls to his key worker, Michelle, yeah. to help get him under control. She is the main person trying to hold this man. It's her and another guy when there's six other male officers. He just falls. She hits her b back on the wall, on the little piece of the wall right there. Like, there's no way, like, come on, man. They're rude, they're abusive. There's just no respect. Fuck this. Thank you. Have a seat, Mr. Goffert. I'm Miss Price. Good morning. The morning after the night before, sober William Goffert is in front of an adjudicating governor. You have been charged with being intoxicated as a consequence of consuming any alcoholic beverage. Do you understand the charge? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Governor William Goffert approached the centre office. He was unsteady on his feet and smelled of alcohol. At this point, I told William to go back to his cell. However, he said, fuck that, I'm not moving. He then pushed back against staff and was restrained. Okay, how are you pleading? I'm guilty. Guilty, okay. Okay, do you want to tell me why that happened? Everything just got on top of me, really. I've had the opportunity to have a drink, I've had the drink, so I've ended up being drunk. And yeah, so, man, it's a mistake that won't happen again. Gofford gets three days in the segregation unit and 21 days loss of privileges. Yeah, all right, thank you very much. Not that bad. But for Officer Michelle Knight, the consequences are more serious. Okay, listen, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm glad he didn't get in trouble for that, what will happen to Michelle, because honestly, there's other guards there that should have stepped up and took her out of that position, switched with her. Like, come on now. That's not his fault. Oh, yeah, Sarah, you're right. She's what? This How guy. Did she punch her along? Are you alright? He was standing there. 
So he should feel... What? How did she punch her along? Oh my God, I didn't know that. Like, been that restraint yesterday with Gothit. Yeah. Michelle Knight got her lung punctured Bloody and hell. she's still in hospital. Can we go visit? Can we go visit real quick? Like... It's two days since Colette O'Flaherty sparked a prison-wide alert by taking a fellow inmate hostage. Okay, right, so we have three charges. Ms. O'Flaherty refused to attend to herself following several instructions from staff to do so. This was during an incident in which she had a blade in her possession and informed staff that she has taken Ms. Carter hostage. Thank you. Do you agree with that statement? Sort of. But I have to explain what's the matter with me to elect to that dive. In... Doesn't matter. In a court, which this is the court, that doesn't matter. Sure, he can have a heart and be like da 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 da, but. In this jail since October, never had a job, seven months behind the door, I had bad anxiety over it. Then they put a slip under my door, not for family day, sir, yeah? And my, my whole heart was for this family day, and they just put it under my door, never got it again. No one come to speak to me, no one come nothing. And that broke me because now I've got to wait longer, sorry, I'm going to get emotional, sorry. So I need to see my... There go, sell it, sell it. I'm giving you tissues. I feel like I owe it to my kids. Right. I thought family day's coming, I'll be able to make it up to them. I had it all planned in my little brain. You should have been told why, all right? And it shouldn't have just been stuck under your door. And if that's the sequence of events that have happened, I apologise, because that shouldn't be the case. Yeah, thank all you. Right? The duty governor's concerned about the incident and Colette's mental health. You self harm before? No. Never. What did you do? Um, I cut my neck and then just cut my arm. Some just rock bottom, there's no 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 lower can go, sir. This is it. The sequence of events as you said them bother me. For someone to as you suggested, be in such a position of distress and hopelessness that you have to self-harm. Yeah. That worries me. The charges are quite serious, uh -huh. but I don't think it's appropriate to continue with the adjudication at the moment. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, well, I guess I was wrong. Dude, dude this guy has is pretty lenient, man. It's pretty cool. He doesn't rule with a stern fist. He rules with compassion. Probably goes a long, long way in prison. So, Thank you, sir. All right. The decision's deferred, and Colette's taken back to the segregation unit, where there's lots of time to reflect. Do you know what today is? Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah. Family day. Look where you are. What is this? Are you going? Thank you. Ooh. 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 Thank you. There you go, thank you. This a prisoner? It's not no, it's not a prison. Oh. That's a prison? I'm a girl that can't deal with answering to my children while I'm here. You know, I find it hard. I've been waiting for this day for so long. The fact that I've never got a chance. And there's, a, there's a little bit of jealousy in there as well. I feel a little bit jealous. But at least I'm out of the way of it. I don't get to see the ladies come back with all, all their little gifts and the buzzing happy faces. Family days for rehabilitation. But I never know, so it's all I've done with me. Honestly, I don't want to hear her side of the story. She put herself in that situation. You had six weeks. Now they just deferred that sentence, so they're going to come back to it. So. A third of all assaults in Britain's jails are against prison staff. 
Up 16% in a year. One in 16 officers quit the service last year alone. Stop them! I don't want them searched! But today, a familiar face is back on D-Wing. Welcome back, Kim. It's been just over two weeks since Officer Kim Newman was injured trying to restrain a prisoner. It's my job. It's, it's what I do. I, I really enjoy the work. Nobody's keeping me away. No angry. Free paid two-week vacation, eh? Free man. <laughs> Walking back onto the unit through these walls makes me a bit nervous. But I'm here to do a job, and that's what I'm going to do. Kim's not the only notable return. Michelle, who did you speak to? Michelle came back. After recovering from a punctured lung, Michelle Knight is also back at work. Michelle, I'm really glad to see you're okay. Um, if you're watching this, my information is down in the description. Just reach out. All right, thank you. Okay, bye. Right, let's go and do this. Okay. And straight back into action. Your pat mate has been uh, caught with stuff he shouldn't have. <laughs> so you've got a hidey hole in there and one in there. No matter what you're feeling inside, you just got to be resilient. You know, move forward and just don't look back. <laughs> for Michelle, being back on D-Wing means coming face to face with the inmate responsible for her injuries, William Goff. No, 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 no. We're not going to paint that scenario. My man just fell backwards and the wall was there and you hit the wall. He's not responsible. Your colleagues are responsible for putting you in that situation. I don't care if nobody says that. I like Miss Knight. I, I get along with her. She's a good member of staff. I've written her a letter of apologies. If she don't accept my sorry, there's not much else I can do, but I hope she does. So how have you been? Been all right, man. Yeah, I he did say in there that, you know, he never wanted to hurt me or it wasn't intentional. He's apologised. I think it's very important to kind of process what happened and try and forgive and move on. Keep my head down. Yeah. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, miss. It's easy to use a prisoner as a scapegoat on what happened in that situation, but I just don't agree. I feel like, of course, Miss Knight is right. just doing her job. You know what I'm saying? This is what she has to do. She has to... Okay, but come on now. This is an irate prisoner. It's taken four of y'all. Like, somebody else needs to grab that particular... Come on, man. Yes, miss. Yes. On D-Wing, an argument breaks out in a cell. And Kim is responding to her first incident since returning. Trusts me, so we had a little chat. Just leave his calm him down. It'll be all right. It takes a long time to calm him down, but when he does calm down, he's pretty good. It's back to business as usual for Kim, and she's taking no prisoners. Excuse me, you're not good looking enough to be on camera, so shut up. <laughs> hey, come, come on, BS. Kim came back with a vengeance, didn't she? A lot of them haven't had any nurturing. She came back with a teardrop on her? No kind words. They've always been told they're useless. They're not going to have a man to anything. You're big enough to apologise when you're in the wrong, OK? You've heard me apologise to prisoners, right? Don't make me a weak woman, does it? Society washes their hands with these guys. I don't want to do that. 
I want to show them they've still got a chance in life. They're still young, they can be something. So start thinking outside the box and who the person you really want to be. And it's getting them to trust you, getting, and so you can help them. And that's what I do best. Don't start, why? Why is always doing this to me at the end of the uh, videos? Like, it's always like losing sound. No, I'm not going. There's still five minutes left. I need to hear it all. Um, let's see. I'm going to edit this out, so don't worry about it too much. But definitely need to figure that out because I'm trying to hear it. Hold on. Rewind it a really want to be and it's getting them to trust you getting and so you can help them and that's what I do best oh so the, the last five minutes of the videos are just all okay so they got they're at church okay pretty much guess what's going on here some church stuff She's feeling better, she's saved, she's Christian, Catholic, something. Okay, she's getting freed, this is a release date. Okay, she's built like a bottle of toothpaste. Uh, no, I'm just, nah, I was just taking her book, she's reminiscing, she's, she's getting cute, she's getting dialed up for her release, or whatever's going on. Yeah, her release. Okay, now she's free. Okay, she stepped out that thing, didn't she? All white with the mink with the mink vest. Okay. Congratulations. Okay, she got a man. Family unit, obviously. There we go. Now we're back. Family unit, obviously. Um, and just for everything to go well now. I just want everything to be grand. That's not me, that's not me, that's the video. Mike Crocker is still enjoying his new career as a prison. Okay, congrats, my boy. You didn't give up. Away from Justin Nelson, who has been transferred to another wing, had to be. It's the safest way to be. Is Newman Lee's holidays too? It's your pad. You made it. Dealing with sex Okay. See hello, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Glad you're back, Michelle. <laughs> mm. 